Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 Rise and Fall. Now there's been a lot of new players coming into the game with uh, various expansion announcements with the Gathering Storm expansion being announced and the release of the Civilization 6 on uh, Nintendo Switch and I think it's also been released on iOS and stuff like that fairly recently last few months so I think there's a lot of new players who are looking for a really comprehensive tutorial and so that's what this series is going to be. It's going to be a series where I play very slowly on a starter difficulty to help you get started to beating the game on your own. So right from the beginning, I have disabled all of my normal modifications that I use in the game. So we're just going to be playing 100% vanilla. We're going to create a game. <clears throat> and now I recommend that if you're a new player, you just stay on the normal setup and create a game and play around for a bit. But it can be a lot of fun to go into the advanced settings here and set up the game the way you want. We will be playing on Prince difficulty, mainly to uh, have the tutorial be applicable in terms of what you're going to experience when you play the game for the first time. You can play on Settler. I would recommend playing on King or Lower for your beginning. Uh, if you're having a little bit of trouble, don't be afraid to lower the difficulty until you get the hang of the game and can beat it consistently on a lower difficulty and then slowly increase how difficult the game is for yourself. We're going to have normal starting era of the ancient era. We're going to have a standard game speed. And we're going to just leave pretty much everything default. We're going to leave the map size small, continents, everything else standard, and leave everything normal. The main thing that we're going to look at here is what civilization leader do we want to pick? Now, there's a lot of really good options if you're a new player. I personally recommend Rome for new players, and that's for a number of reasons. Um, this is a really, really strong civilization for new players. Um, but there is a bit of a problem with playing Rome, and that's that you won't get a sense of what the game is like without all their nice bonuses. So we're going to kind of just have a little bit of a quick look around and see who we want to take advantage of and play as. Let's see. Japan is actually quite a good starter civilization because their bonuses don't really affect the game too much. Um, another good starter civilization is Gilgamesh. They're quite good. Um, but I think we're going to start off with... Let me see. Hmm. Really, any civilization works. I'm trying to look for a civilization who doesn't change how you play too much. Hmm. Let's see, the Aztecs are a good starter civilization because they don't actually change how you play too much. Um, we will get started with... Yeah, I think we'll play the Aztecs because they just... They, they have a bonus that's applicable from minute one in the game which is the uh, Eagle Warrior. And just generally speaking, you're going to have a little benefits that kind of help you along. So let's get started. We'll talk a little bit about the Aztec's bonuses and we'll talk about various stages of the game. So the first thing we need to talk about with the Aztecs is that they get extra amenities from luxury resources. So if you're a new player, you're probably going to struggle managing amenities um, in your first few games until you get the hang of how to properly manage them. So getting extra amenities is actually really, really nice because you don't have to worry about them as much. We also get the Legend of the Five Sons, which means if you don't know what to do with your builder, you can just use them to boost up a district. They also get the Eagle Warrior, which is a bonus that's applicable from minute one in the game because you start off with an Eagle Warrior, who is just a stronger warrior that you can use to help you in the early game. And Talachi is just a slightly better arena. So the really nice thing about the Aztecs is that we immediately start with plus four error score. So looking at this starting location, it's actually very weak. What we're going to do is we are going to go down here to the map options and turn on the yield icons. That will give us a better idea of what sort of resources we can expect from our settlements. We're also going to turn on the settler map mode so that we just have a better idea of where the fresh water is. Uh, okay. All right, so we don't need to talk about this settlement location. Starting off on Tundra is not very good. However, we don't really have anywhere we could move to that would be much better. So I think we are going to settle in place. And the part of the reason is, if you settle on a plains hill, um, you will gain plus one production in your capital city. If we were to settle here, the capital city would be 
two food, one production. But if we settle here, it'll be two food, two production. That's because when you settle on a hill, you preserve the production. If we were to settle on this forest, which is a feature, it would instantaneously get removed just like rainforest, marsh, and rainforest, marsh, and forest or uh, woods all get removed when you settle or place a district on them. So we're going to settle on the hill because we will preserve the production, but that is not true if you settle on a forest. So we're going to select our settler and immediately click on the found the city button. And you can see two food, two production. We also need to make a few more decisions here in the very first turn. The first thing we're going to look after is taking a look at our production. So generally speaking in the early game, you have a few viable options. Now, <clears throat> you're either going to want to produce a scout or a slinger in the early game. And the reason for this is you need units to explore the map and find more information about what you're doing. However, as the Aztecs, our unique unit is the Eagle Warrior. And we want to take advantage of the Eagle Warrior as early in the game as possible. So we're going to start off by building an Eagle Warrior. We should take a moment to talk about the yields of your city. So we will go into the citizen screen, which will allow us to manage and place our citizens on various tiles around our city. As you can see, most of the tiles will only give us, at this early stage in the game, either food or production. There is a tile over here that gives us culture, and we'll spend a moment talking about that, but let's focus on food and production first. Food is what you use to grow your population and work more tiles. If you click on the toggle city details, you can see over here in the citizens amenities and housing screen that it tells you all the information that you need to know about how fast your city is growing. You can see here that our city is gaining plus three food per turn. We are consuming two food because we have one citizen. Each citizen consumes two food. And our growth, our net growth per turn after three minus two is plus one. So, which will means we need 15 food to grow, which means it'll take 14 turns for us to grow because math, just don't worry about it too much. Uh, partially, it's partially because I think we're getting an amenity growth bonus that makes it speed up ever so slightly. You see the modified food per turn is 1.1, which is here shaving one turn off of the food needed to grow. So my recommendation is you always want to be working with your very first citizen. You want to be working a tile that is at least two food. So if we look around here, we have a one food tile, a one food tile, a one food tile over here. A no food tile on the mountain that we can't work and a one food tile here however we do have a one a two food one production tile over here which i think we will work and if you see down here the extra one food per turn has basically doubled how quickly we're going to grow to our next citizen and that's really really important in the early game growing your city to your housing limit which is something we'll talk about a little bit later is quite important because it allows you to work more tiles but also each citizen in your city passively generates a little bit of culture and a little bit of science, which we'll talk about now. Culture is the resource that you use to unlock civics. Civics are like your cultural technology tree. There's a lot of really important things in here that we'll talk about as they come up. But generally speaking, having lots of culture is really good because it allows you to unlock new types of governments, uh, new types of buildings and units and wonders, and also new cards that can be very, very powerful for modifying your civilization. The most important decision that you're going to make in the early game is actually your research. So we will talk about all of these decisions that you can make currently um, and then what the follow up decisions to those might be, which might modify those. So, for example, we could get a galley. We could go for the sailing technology, which would allow us to build galleys, build fishing boats with builders, and it would also allow builders to embark onto water. This is quite a good opening technology if you're on some sort of water map or if you're coastal. It's not a great choice, generally speaking. I would recommend maybe not going for this unless you have really, really good reasons to. But it is an acceptable choice if the situation calls for it. Another really good choice in the early game is actually astrology, because astrology will give you access to the holy site, which will allow you to play around with a religion. It also leads into celestial navigation. So religion and coastal cities tend to kind of feed together into some sort of naval game. The other options that we have are pottery, which would unlock the granary, which gives us more food and more housing, which would allow us to grow our cities bigger. This is generally speaking a pretty good opening option. 
because it leads into irrigation and writing if you want to get an early game science lead because camp the campus gives you access or sorry writing gives you access to the campus and the library which is good for generating science the defensively minded option is actually animal husbandry which allows you to improve some early game tiles like the pasture and camp which can be placed on things like sheep on horses and the camp can be placed on things like deer and truffles the reason this is a defensively minded thing is that it leads into archery which gives you access to the archery unit and the temple of artemis wonder we'll kind of skip over wonders for now because they're not super important but the most important thing is that this will give you access to archery which is a really strong defensive and offensive unit in the early game Another early game viable option is mining if you want to get a builder out early and you have uh, something you want to do with those mines. For this game, we're going to go ahead and immediately get started on, <clears throat> on mining. And that's because we want to get to bronze working to get access to the encampment. As the Aztecs, we have some really good benefits for going to war. And the encampment is the district that gives us a lot of benefits towards going for war. It'll also unlock mines, which might actually help us here because we don't have very good tiles here. So we want to unlock early game resources. However, it would actually be a fairly reliable and viable choice here for us to go for animal husbandry, which is a more defensive route, but it would give us access to the pasture, which would allow us to improve our two sheep tiles that we have. So normally I would personally go for mining here, but in this instance, we're going to focus on going for animal husbandry so that we have the option to improve some of these uh, sheep tiles in the near future. Now, with your warrior, what you're going to want to do in the early game is identify your latitude on the map. In this instance, it's really easy because all we have to do is scroll down and we can see that we are actually fairly low on the map. And to the north, there's a lot of room to expand. So we know for a fact that there's going to be a lot of snow and tundra to our south. So we don't want to explore to the south because we don't want to settle tundra uh, or snow. Um, early that's sort of stuff we might want to settle later uh, if the rest of the good land is taken up so since we know that we're south on the map we know that the good land is going to be to the north so we're going to explore to the west and to the north and see if we can make anything of that the reason we're not exploring to the east is just because this area over here is a little bit flatter and also you can see right here this is a cliff graphic so we can tell that there's water on the other side of these uh, tiles so there probably isn't much land to explore over here anyway so let's go to the next turn and it looks like we met Buenos Aires and we were the first civilization to meet Buenos Aires Buenos Aires is an industrial city-state if you're not sure what a city-state does just click on them and it'll bring up this screen and you can figure out what they do so Buenos Aires is an industrial type city-state and by meeting them first and being the very first person to meet them we got a free envoy this free envoy is very very important uh, for you to play around in the early game to take maximum advantage of it um, the bonuses that meeting a city-state first give you are really really powerful and so you're going to want to take advantage of them in this case it gives us plus two production and building towards wonders building and districts so we're going to want to take advantage of that by switching our production here to a monument normally the monument would take us quite a while to build but if we go in here and we just check you can see now we're getting plus two towards buildings from buenos aires so this means we can build this almost uh 40 percent faster than normal because our base production was about 5.3 and now we're getting plus two which means we're we're building it and sev with 7.3 production per turn, which is a lot faster than we were before. We're going to continue exploring this direction and we're going to move up onto the hill because we want to know what's up here. And by moving onto a hill, our units can actually see further. <clears throat> Let's go to the next turn. Um, this plus two production only applies in the capital. We also don't need to worry about their uh, three Envoy bonus. Really, you're just looking at this and seeing what this is. And you, generally speaking, you want to play around it if it's an option. So it looks like we have discovered a natural wonder, but we haven't quite revealed it yet. But I'm going to be, guess it's the del be guessing that it's the Delicate Arch based on this two culture, two faith on a desert tile. We want to reveal um natural wonders in the early game oh it's uluru sorry a delicate arch gives you gold 
So this is a natural wonder. This is a randomly generated um, piece of terrain that gives extra bonuses either to the tile that it is on or the tiles that are adjacent to it. And so you can see here, this gives extra culture and faith. This sort of culture and faith in the early game is really, really powerful because it's actually quite hard to get culture and faith in the early game until you've unlocked either the theater square at Drama and Poetry, which you can see is quite far into the um, culture tree, or the holy site, which is a pretty long technology to research in the very early game. You can see mining takes uh, 10 turns, whereas astrology takes 20 turns base. But because we found a natural wonder, we got an, uh, a eureka boost, which means it only takes 12 turns. Finding a natural wonder is also very powerful because it gives you um, plus three error score. Error score is something we will talk about when it becomes relevant. But generally speaking, you're going to want to get as much error score as possible. So let's continue to explore. I'm going to loop back to the right here and up. So it looks like we found more coastline over here, which is a little bit far from ideal, but it'll be fine. And it looks like we've also found our Ma. And we were also the first person to find our Ma as well. This has given us plus two faith in the capital, which is really, really powerful. Faith is quite difficult to generate in the early game and getting early game faith is really, really nice because it allows you to uh, get your Pantheon early. Pantheon is again something we'll talk about a little bit more when it becomes relevant, but finding early game city states is really, really nice because it just gives you more resources. And this one is really nice because we don't actually have to do anything to take advantage of it. It's just giving us two faith. I'm going to continue exploring to the north along the coastline and we'll go to the next turn. So there's no alert for this, but our capital city just grew. And now it's working this uh, one food to production tile. In one turn, our borders will grow, which is based on how much f culture you generate in a city. Every bit of culture you generate will increase the rate at which your borders grow and that will unlock a new tile for us to work. Normally, I would actually look for a really good tile to buy in the early game, like this sheep tile, uh, once we have 50 gold. But since it's gonna be unlocked first, anyway, we don't need to spend money on it. <clears throat> Let's keep exploring. We're gonna loop back down this way. Uh, there's a tendency for city-states to spawn in a trio. So sometimes it can be quite useful to check in a sort of triangular position from another two city-states because there tends to have a pretty high chance of there being another city-state here. In this case, we're using the settler map mode to scout, which is on the normal hotkey 4 on your keyboard, and you can see this tile isn't red, which is, suggests there might not be another city-state down there. However, we did discover a fairly good location for a settlement. These stone tiles are quite nice for being able to harvest them and turn them into extra production. And there's also a really good location here for either a campus or a holy site nestled in on this mountain. And we've completed the animal husbandry research. This gives us the option to get a builder to improve these tiles. Let's go ahead and have a look at this city. Now that the borders have grown, we have two sheep tiles now available to us, so a builder is starting to look more and more viable. However, the Eagle Warrior is a unique unit with a timer hanging over its head because it goes obsolete very, very quick. So we want to take advantage of it as fast as possible by building an Eagle Warrior. And we can also use the Eagle Warrior to generate... Um, to generate builders by attacking Buenos Aires. Since we've already taken advantage of the plus two production from them, we no longer need them around. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack Buenos Aires since we don't really have any buildings we can build to take advantage of that plus two production. Now, the other option is we could go for astrology here and use that production boost to build our uh, holy site up. However, since we're the Aztecs, we can use the builders that we get from killing Buenos Aires to build up our holy site anyway. So we're going to go, we're going to just bring this warrior back and go to war with Buenos Aires. This is an Aztec specific strategy, so probably won't apply to some of your games, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of how you play around the bonuses. We've just unlocked Code of Laws, which is the very first civic in the game. So let's go ahead and change our policies, and we'll kind of analyze the two choices in each category. 
These are our military policies. Generally speaking, any cards that you put in here will be red. Almost this is the only cards that can go in here are red. Um, and similarly, in economic policies, the only cards you can put in here are yellow. You have a couple of choices in the early game. You can either use Discipline, which will increase your ability to fight and kill barbarians. We already have a pretty strong unit in the form of the Aztec Eagle Warrior, so we probably don't need the extra combat strength to fight barbarians. Uh, survey is another option. If you were playing another civilization and you started off with a scout, this can be quite useful to get your scouts leveled up so that they can explore more efficiently. <clears throat> Um, but in this case, Discipline is almost always the right choice, just because combat strength is so valuable, particularly in the early game, and particularly against Barbarians. Now, uh, a lot of players would have the mistaken idea that these are of equivalent value. However, the God King is almost always weaker than Urban Planning, because we naturally tend to produce gold in the early game anyway through our cities. So increased gold production doesn't really make a huge difference, whereas in increased production, uh, generally speaking, can snowball you quite well. Not only that, but urban planning tends to work in all of your cities and not just your capital. Um, this can be okay if you have like a plus one faith and you want to get your pantheon a little bit quicker to secure a really good pantheon, but we already have plus two faith from the city-state, so there's no need to get the extra faith or gold. So we're going to lock in Discipline, which is plus 5 Combat Strength against Barbarians, and plus 1 Production from all cities with Urban Planning. These are the two that I would recommend you take in 95% of your games. There are situations where you want to go for these two, but in nine, again, in 95% of your games, these are the two that I'm going to recommend for your first policy choices. Now we need to make a decision about which way down the tree that we want to go. In some games, you're going to want to go for foreign trade. In some games, you want to go for craftsmanship. In this particular game, because we're playing as the Aztecs and we have bonuses for our very first military unit, which is a melee unit, uh, melee is a class, not a way of attacking, as you can see here, uh, plus 50% production towards classical era melee, anti-cavalry, and range units. In this case, melee is a class of units that includes the warrior and any unique units, the swordsman and any unique units, the rifleman, all those kind of melee class units. Anti-cavalry includes stuff like spearmen, pikemen, and pike and shot, and range units include stuff like slingers, archers, and crossbowmen. In this instance, because we want to be building a lot of Eagle Warriors in the early game, we're going to go straight for a Gog. And also, the nice thing is, because we got our monument really early, we're going to unlock this really, really early, which is really, really nice. Ilkum is quite good if you want to build builders in the early game, but again, we're playing the Aztecs, so we're going to get free builders from killing things. Uh, I don't know, maybe I didn't explain that fully, uh, but the Eagle Warrior, when it kills a unit, it has a chance to um, spawn a builder. It has a chance to capture other civilizations' military units by turning them into builders. And that's why we're going to be attacking Buenos Aires. We're not looking to kill Buenos Aires, we're looking to kill any units they produce and steal any builders they produce. So we'll just look around and see if we can find them. There we go, there's a warrior. Let's declare war on Buenos Aires. and hope that their warrior attacks us. Now we no longer get the plus two production from being having an envoy with Buenos Aires because you lose your envoys with a city-state when you declare war on them, but that's not a big deal. And this is also in an advantageous position because our warrior naturally has eight more combat strength than other players' warriors, but this warrior is also standing in a marsh tile, which gives it minus two combat power. It's also taking some damage from fighting that barbarian scout, so it's even weaker. So we're going to do a huge amount of damage and take very little damage ourselves. We did 42 and we took 18. Ah, so this is something you need to be aware of. Um, if you kill a unit on the defensive with an Eagle Warrior, it actually has a fairly low chance to spawn a Builder. Uh, in fact, I don't think there is a chance for it to spawn a Builder. So generally speaking, uh, it might be a good idea to let them hit you first and then you hit them back. Now we get to choose our Pantheon. Now again, uh, there's a lot of really, really good choices in here, but playing as the Aztecs, this simplifies our choice a lot because we want to get God of the Forge so that we can produce more of these Eagle Warriors, which gives us production towards ancient and classical military area units. So this makes this choice fairly straightforward and we don't have to worry about anything. By founding a Pantheon, we also got an inspiration towards mysticism. And we also got... 
we also got some era score from founding a pantheon too if we go in here into the civic tree you can see here mysticism is a third tier is a third tier civic one two three uh that gives us access to plus two great scientist points per turn plus two great profits the oracle and plus one envoy we don't need to really worry about this but essentially we just got some free culture so i'm hoping they attack me and then I can attack them and kill them. We've also unlocked astrology. And since we do have faith generation in the early game, we are going to be going for a religion of the Aztecs. So you want to look for um, either a tile that has a really high yield of the base resource when you're placing a district. Um, you can see here the holy site is a district that we can build. So if I place the holy site right here, it would give me plus three faith. However, it would use up a really valuable tile, and that's a plains hill. Plains hills, when you put mines on them, either yield anywhere from three to five production in the late game. And we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it to give up this plains hill for the plus three faith? And I think it is worth it for a few reasons. First of all, we have plenty of other hills that we can use to turn into mines. Um, and we can also use these... Uh, tundra tiles for other districts later on so i'm going to place a holy site right here and that will lock in the price so something that's important to know as you research technologies in civilization 6 the cost of your districts is going to increase basically if you have 100 technologies researched your district is going to be uh, a lot more expensive to build than if you had 20 districts to build however when you place a district on the map like I just did, you lock in that price. So now this will be permanently fixed at 64 production. So I can go off and do other things and then always just come back and build this for 64 production. So even though I've placed my holy site, I'm actually going to get started on an Eagle Warrior because I want to take advantage of the Eagle Warrior as much as I can in the early game. We also have a Buenos Aires Warrior here that's low enough for us to kill. So we are going to try and get that kill. And unfortunately, we didn't quite get the RNG to get the builder out of it, which is kind of sad, but not a big deal. We'll just keep our Eagle Warriors packed around the city state to see if they produce any more. To see if they produce any more units that we can kill. <clears throat> So we unlocked Animal Husbandry and Astrology. Now we're going to follow this up with Mining because we want to unlock Iron. Iron is a very valuable resource. Alternatively, we could go for the Campus. Um, however, we have already placed a district in here and we're not going to unlock another district for quite a while. So I think we're going to go ahead and grab Mining because that'll open up the option to build some mines if we want. I'm just going to park you here. Uh, there's a few choices when you get a promoted unit. You can see here this promotion available. Uh, for melee units, I would recommend the Battlecry, Tortoise, and Commando promotions. These three promotions together make your melee units a lot tougher to kill and a lot more useful. Um, generally speaking, I don't recommend going for Amphibious. Urban Warfare and Zweihander can be useful, but they're just not as useful as going for these three. And so the first one you want to pick is sort of situational. Are you going to be taking more ranged attacks or are you going to be fighting more melee units? In this case, it's unlikely we're going to be taking ranged attack damage in this early game stage of the game. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take Battle Cry. And the advantage of that too is that it heals us up. We're going to park this second guy right here. And we'll just fortify and wait for them to continue spawning units to defend themselves and kill those units off. And it looks like the barbarians have found us and decided to come a knocking. Don't panic. Barbarians actually can't do anything to you in the early game. Barbarians can only damage infrastructure you've actually already built. And we haven't built any infrastructure, so we only have units. And by only having units, they can't really do anything to us. Um, so this can be actually a pretty difficult choice um, to switch away from discipline in the early game when you have barbarians to fight. Because we just unlocked a couple of new cards, one of them is a Gog and one of them is Ilkum. I kind of want to build. I kind of want to have all of all four of these cards locked in, but I can't. Um, so because I'm building a lot of units, 
I'm going to focus on a GOG. Because my plan is to build a bunch of Eagle Warriors and see if I can get value out of them. So now our next technology is a difficult choice as well. Military tradition is a really nice one uh, to, as a follow-up for craftsmanship if you're going for any sort of early game aggression. Um, because what it does is it unlocks the ability for your units to grant flanking and support combat bonuses. How flanking and support works is basically if you are going to attack a unit and you have another unit adjacent to that unit, you will do a bonus plus two damage. Uh, or, or have plus two combat strength, which means you can do more damage. If you are being attacked and you have units adjacent to you, they will provide uh, support bonuses, which means you will have plus two combat strength on the defense. So this can actually be very important to pick up in the early game in order to be uh, stronger with your military. As you can see, as I hover over this guy, he has plus five river defense. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step out of the city and let them attack me first. Because I'm, if I stand here, the Barbarian AI is a little bit silly and it'll almost always just value attacking over doing anything else. So if I stand over here, they will attack me and take a, I will get a plus five defense bonus, which will mean I'll do a lot more damage. As you can see, they took 58 damage from attacking me across the river, and we'll just spend a turn healing. And they're going to do it again. They swap their units. They see that this unit would have died, so they swap them. And it looks like another um, Buenos Aires unit has popped out of the city. So we're just going to stay fortified here. Let them hit us once first, and then we'll hit back. And again, we're just going to fortify here and let them hit me because it's always better to take the damage if you're in an advantageous position. And now we can strike back and kill both of these units. Oh, I thought I would have the combat bonuses. I guess not. It's okay. So can we get a kill here? I think we can. And that gives us a good chance of getting a builder. Excellent, so we got our first free builder from attacking Buenos Aires. This builder will be very, very useful, and we're going to send it back to our city um, to start improving tiles. Who deserves more credit than them? So, even though we're relatively low on health, because if we look down here, you can see our experience bar is 14 out of 15. So that means if we get any more experience, we're going to level up. And when you take a promotion, you get a heal. So it's actually worth it to attack here, get the promotion, and then heal ne the next turn. And by killing three barbarians, we get the knowledge boost towards bronze working. What we're going to do is go in here. And so normally bronze working would take about 23 turns to research. Generally speaking, technologies on the same level will take about the same amount of time. I think astrology is like the only exception. I could be wrong on that. Or maybe I'm... Yeah. No, no, it, no, it does cause the same. But yeah, generally speaking, technologies on the same line, like uh, vertical line in the tech tree will cost the same. So you can see by killing three barbarians, we've actually made bronze working a lot cheaper for us to research. And because it's cheaper, we're going to go ahead and research it. It'll also unlock iron and the encampment district. I'm going to fortify until healed here. I'm going to pull this guy back to here to heal because we want to be baiting the warriors out of the city. And then I'm going to walk the builder home to start improving this. Um, generally speaking, you don't want to walk the builders home on their own. But in this instance, I can kind of see all of the land in here. So I know that it's safe. And it looks like another warrior has come out to play. We're just going to again fortify. Let them hit us first so that we can get the kill. This guy has a promotion, and uh, one little trick that you can do is move your unit one tile before you promote. That allows you to just get that little bit of extra movement. And again, we're going to take the battle cry promotion, because it's just generally more applicable to combat in the early game. And we'll walk the builder back. Since we have animal husbandry, we're going to look to improve these <clears throat> with pastures. And he's going to attack us again and take a bunch of damage. And then we should be able to uh, kill them again. And we've captured ourselves another builder. So essentially, normally a builder would cost us about 50 production to produce. But by investing uh, 30, uh, sorry, 
by investing 65 production into two eagle warriors we've generated two builders at a cost of 100 production so not only do we have two warriors we also have two um two builders out of the same production and we can just park these guys here forever essentially and just keep farming out their units However, there is a scout here that might try to capture my builder, so we're going to try to deal with that. I'm positioning a trap around the scout so that no matter where he goes, I'll be able to get at least one attack off on him. If he goes here, I'll get one attack. If he goes here, I'll get two attacks. If he goes here, I'll get one attack and he won't be able to escape. So we're basically just trying to box the scout in so that he can't be annoying. And we have our Aztec Eagle Warrior guarding the builder here because the eagle warrior is standing on the builder it can't actually be attacked we're going to get this guy to fortify until healed because he's pretty low and he doesn't have another promotion for quite a while and now we need to make a decision about whether or not we start building the holy site or continue to produce eagle warriors i think we could st keep um getting some really good value out of these eagle warriors so we're going to keep making eagle warriors you can see another warrior has come out I'm going to take the risk. Uh, I'm going to keep the builder near the Aztec warrior for now until we can deal with this scout. Now, as you can see, the scout has now been properly trapped and we can do major damage to him. And our first builder has arrived home and they will build a pasture for us. This will improve this tile from being two food, one production to being two food, two production. As you can see, now our city produces 11 total production, which is about a 10% boost. So builders are really, really powerful in the early game for increasing the power of your cities. But that's going to be the first 30 or so turns of a Prince game. So I'm going to call that the end of this episode. I hope you guys are finding this helpful and valuable for you making decisions and understanding what you should do in the early game. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.